What's up? This is off my phone, and guys, today I got a little bit of a comparison video. I wanted to talk to you guys about what the 2ZZ feels like in the Corolla versus what the 2ZZ feels like in the Celica. Now, I honestly didn't think that there was that much of a difference. I really didn't. I, um, I've never owned a Celica. The only 2ZZ car uh, that I've ever owned was the Corolla XRS. Um, in my last video, I might have said that. But uh, before I even got into 2ZZs, I mean, I, you know, all I knew was pretty much like a turbo car. Like I had a Supra before, an 89 Supra with a 1J. And then, um, but that's like way before YouTube. Um, I had a SC300, I had a GS300. And I, honestly, I, I never really put thought into a 2ZZ until I went to um a meet like a, a we call it down here la fiebre it's pretty much where a bunch of people meet up and they race um this was back in like 2000 and like 2004 when this car um when the corolla xrs first came out um obviously it was marketed as a 2005 car but the car actually came out in 2004 but i went to the races and i saw an xrs and it was giving it to a bunch of Hondas. And I was like, what is this? And I talked to the kid afterwards. And all he did was pretty much take out the filter, open the box, and drop the um, exhaust. Um, and he was just giving it to a whole bunch of cars. So I was like, you know what? I want that car. It's a sleeper. It's a Corolla. And it can be quick. So that's how I got introduced to the 2ZZ. Uh, before I got introduced to the Corolla, I was actually looking at a Celica. And I was um, actually in the process of getting a Celica. But for my age at that time, I mean, I was like 18 years old. Uh, a Celica on insurance for an 18 year old was, especially a GTS, was expensive. So that never went through. I, you know, I got a ride in one, but I never actually got to drive it. Uh, so, yeah. So that was like pretty much the last time I actually ever drove a Celica hard or not drove but like rode in a Celica where somebody was driving it pretty hard but when I got this one um and ever since then I've always wanted a Celica ever since then I've always you know wondered what it'd be like to have a Celica you know always in the back of my head like man I should buy a Celica because they're kind of cheap and my buddy always had one that honestly he never really he was not really a um, a racer type of dude. He doesn't like, you know. He bought this car pretty much as I told him to <laughs> back in the day. So he he bought this car and owned it since 2005 or six, something like that. 2008. Some I don't remember the year exactly, but throughout the years he never really did anything to it and. He never really even knew that this car was um, with lift. Like, he drove it thinking that this car, you know, was slow. He's like, bro, like, this Celica is not even that fast. And I'm like, bro, like, you know, when you're driving it, when do you shift? And he was telling me he was, like, shifting at 5,500 uh, RPM. Like, the lift doesn't even hit until 62 in this car. So, um, actually, I think it's 61, one of the two. But anyways, so, yeah, so he didn't really know what he had pretty much is what i'm trying to get at and uh i you know i told him i've always told him yo if you ever get rid of that car let me know let me know and one day you know i offered to to him my services as a mechanic and trade for the car and he talked it over with his wife and he said yes and uh and i was like sweet now i got my celica i could drive it and when I first got into it and I did my first pull, I was super surprised. Like, super surprised. The surprise so much that I was like, well, how quick is this car bone stock? Like, it just felt quick. Um, so I looked it up and, you know, the 2000 Celica does a 15 flat. Uh, at 94, I think is what I, I looked up. And that's pretty quick for a bone stock car from the 2000s um so uh, yeah so i was 
su- pleasantly surprised. And compared to the Corolla, I mean, a bone stock Corolla does 15 sevens, like at 90. Um, this is pretty impressive. Um, the vehicle is old, obviously. I mean, it's it needs work, but it's I feel like it's worth keeping. Like my my original plan was to take the motor out of this and the trans out of this and like build it and do like you know something like that so that I could one day maybe use it on the on the Corolla. But now I'm I'm honestly feeling like I should take the stuff off of the Corolla and put it on this thing because it's just that much fun. The differences for me um, that I've noticed is just kind of the way you sit in the car. You're lower, so it feels um, sportier, obviously. Uh, The seats hug you a little better because they have, you know, like the bucket-style seats. Um, It just feels more sporty. Uh, It handles a lot better than the Corolla does. Um, you, and you just definitely feel it like when you're going around the corner. And this thing needs like hella, hella a lot, like amounts of suspension work. And it still feels pretty nimble and um, nice around the corners. So it's got that over the Corolla. Uh, it's lighter than the Corolla. It's like about 150 pounds lighter, which is pretty amazing considering the Corolla is a four door. It's only like 150 pounds heavier. But um, but yeah, the difference is in the motor. This vehicle doesn't come with air injection uh, for the exhaust, so there is no air injection system in this car. Um, the lift comes in sooner. You could actually stay in lift in this bone stock ECU. Um, I've done it various times in this car already so when you're shifting from first to second you stay in lift uh, if you rev it up high enough um, the stock rev limiter in this car is 8500 compared to the 8200 from the Corolla uh, lift in the Corolla is set at like 6700 this is like 6100 or 6000 rpm um, the gearing in this car is, what I was told is the same as the Corolla. It has the same gearing, so it's not like it's got a lower gear so that it takes off the line quicker, but it does feel like it takes off quicker. Like, in the Corolla, I'm sometimes afraid of racing minivans because I feel like they're going to take me off the line. <laughs> like, I have to always play the catch-up game. In this, I'm, like, more confident to take off on somebody. Like, I feel like it's quicker off the line than the Corolla. Um, what else have I noticed? I mean, I'm talking about, this is only a week of me driving this car that I've noticed these things. Now, I'm in no way saying that this bone stock Celica GTS can come even near beating my Corolla. Not even close. My Corolla would destroy this thing. But what I'm talking about is stock for, what I'm talking about is stock for stock, this car just seems like it has a good amount of potential compared to the Corolla. The Corolla, I feel like, I don't know what it is about the Corolla. I don't know if it's the weight or like just the feel of it, but this car just feels like potential wise, I'd rather be spending my money on it, on this than the Corolla. Um, I know probably some of you don't want to hear that. Some probably you're like, oh, you're hating on the Corolla, blah, blah, blah. No, I'm not hating on the Corolla. I love my Corolla. I love uh, the fact that it's a sleeper. But let's, you know, be real here. It's not a, uh, it's not a sports car. You know, it doesn't feel like a sports car until you get on it. Um, it handles okay, but it's not, it's not a sports car. This feels more like a sports car. This just feels more nimble. It feels light. Um, it feels quicker off the line like it just it has that feeling to it but like I said before guys like I'll even do like a downshift here just so you see what I'm talking about it's not going to be the Corolla like it's not even close but the Corolla also has a lot of stuff done to it you know a lot of bolt-ons so this is bone stock it just the, 
the potential excites me a lot with this car. So, this is where I have my dilemma. The Corolla is a four-door car. It's more practical. I have two kids. I need a car that has four doors. Like, there's no ifs, ands, buts about it. I need a four-door. So, the Corolla, in that sense, is more practical. If you are a family man, like, there's no way that you can have a Celica and have the... I mean, you can, because there there are back seats, but it's just not practical. Like, it's not practical at all. Um, the space that you have back there, a small child will fit. And, you know, not to say that you can't do it. I mean, my parents, my dad owned a Celica, like an 88 Celica back in the day. And we used to get in the back seat all the time with that thing. And we were like tight back there but we did it you know it's um he had two kids so i'm not saying you can't do it it's just not practical um so yeah so that's where i'm at right now guys with this like i have to take the transmission out of this because the corolla has a third gear issue and i don't want to drive the corolla like that um and this is just a spare car that i have give me a second Yeah, so, <clears throat> so pretty much I, I don't have another car that I could just say, you know, I, I'm going to, like, I don't have another four-door car. I mean, my wife's car, the Venza, but I don't have the luxury to be like, yeah, I can ha be without a four-door car. It's just not, not possible. So, yeah, that's where I'm at, man. I, I do not want to take the transmission from this car and put it in the, in the Corolla because I feel like, I fell in love with this car this week. Like it was, it's a lot of fun, and it has a lot of potential. And I, I just, I feel like it's a waste of car if I take the trans out of it. Not only that, it's just, it's a pretty much a babied uh, Celica because my boy drove it like, you know, he was so careful with it. Um, so yeah, it's like, it's a waste. I feel like. Give me a second. I'm going to pass this dude. Yeah, so there you go. You got a little pull there. If you noticed in the video, I never got out of lift. So, yeah, that was like a first first second to third real quick pull so you guys can see what it's like full stock but oh another thing that this car that i feel like it sounds better than the corolla bone stock i mean it could just be that it's smaller so there's more like noise coming into it but it just sounds good um it's the same motor it's not like it's gonna sound different but it's kind of hard to explain when you get on it like around three and a half rpm or four you feel like a a nice solid induction noise come on so yeah it's just tuned differently too i mean this car comes with 180 horsepower stock compared to the 170 167 from the two the two generations of the corolla xrs but um but yeah i'm rambling at this point honestly i i just wanted to say that i'm pleasantly surprised with the Celica and I'm gonna try my best to mess with it like another thing is it's money honestly like what I can probably do is take the, the transmission out of this and put it into the Corolla and then later on get a transmission for this but that costs money like I don't I don't just have extra money laying around like that um, you know I want to get to that point with YouTube but it's not there right now. I mean, they took away the monetization. The only money I ever made from YouTube was a hundred bucks, and that was once. And um, and that was it. They took away the monetization. Like, I got pretty much had to start over from zero until I get the one thousand subscribers. But but yeah, I this would be such a fun project card to like take the motor out, rebuild it, maybe even do like an all motor build. Um, because I kind of like the all motor build compared to the uh, turbo builds. Um, 
or maybe even do a turbo build. But all that stuff costs money, and that's like time and money that I don't have at the moment. So, yeah, that's why I'm probably gonna have to to put this thing out of commission. But anyways, I'm gonna like I said, we'll see what happens here in the next couple of weeks. I really want to do something with this car. I'm gonna see if I can try to find some sort of way to, to get a transmission or get a hold of something or maybe one of you guys has a spare transmission laying around somewhere or um, but these transmissions like you can't interchange Corolla XRS's with these transmissions. You have to it has to be a Celica GTS trans because they're just different. You could swap a Celica GTS trans into a XRS, but you can't do the opposite because on the XRS where there's supposed to be a hole on one side for the Celica, it's blocked off on the XRS. So, yeah. So unfortunately, I can't just be like, yeah, I'll just put the XRS trans, who cares if I'm missing third, and call it a day, and I'll have this just running around so I can mess with it. It, I, it doesn't work like that. But, we'll see. But anyways, guys, I just wanna do this real, quick video just to show you guys the comparisons of of the two cars and um and yeah let me do a quick little hit real quick so you guys see where the lift kicks in that's another thing like the clutch on this car is probably going out so right now it's not in lift obviously my car would have been in lift already but that's because it's tuned so i'm gonna get on it so you see it right there so it's like 6100 6100 RPM, but when lift kicks in in this car, dude, this thing moves, bro. It, it moves. For being bone stock, this thing moves. So, so yeah. Anyways, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, I'll keep you updated on the Corolla and the. I'm gonna probably do it this weekend on Sunday, and I'll take a couple video shots, and it'll be another video. But until the next one, guys. Peace out.